Tolstoy describes art by whether the intent of the creator is realized by the receiver on the other end. And right. you know, from my company, we, we take that to heart because yeah. we build technologies that are about enabling tools and experiences and translating those across different endpoints and contexts. And suddenly there's this, you know, Tolstoy's theories and, and philosophical musings are actually realizable because you're talking about a future not so far away where how we interact with our technology is personalized, whether, you know, something as simple as whether I can hear dialogue, okay? That's something that's gonna be driven by AI because we have the hooks in place today to be able to amplify that dialogue. Because if you can't hear it, I promise you're not having the experience that the creator intended. The connection. And that can all happen by, you know, cognitive, tracking cognitive load by my pupil or knowing something about, you know, I can pick that up in your ear. Suddenly I have a, a different interface that's driven by AI, driven by the fact that now this lab-based technology and computational complexity lives on a chip and the evolution of silicon to enable this in tiny devices in that ubiquity is, is really important. Mm -hmm. Do you think that AI is more being used to create content or to help creators create better content? Um, so AI that creates content autonomously is, is not even close to what we can do. Um, you know, there's the, the techniques that are deployed now and that are very robust and reliable, such as deep learning, are very good at um, representing and analyzing sort of low-level data, right? So sensory data, you know, image data, sound data. Um, telling stories is manipulating symbols. Mm -hmm. And, and we're, we're far away from a future that, where machines are able to extrapolate this low-level data in the same way that the brain does into symbols and manipulating the symbols in a way that resonates with human audiences. That said, um, you know, Hollywood spends $200 billion a year making and marketing content with um, a methodology that is proven over the years to return an investment, but is by no means optimized, right? There's still too many bad decisions, there's still too many stories, frankly, that aren't being told. Right? There, there's, if you look at uh, the mathematical structure of narrative that's been that's been told in in film or TV, um, you see this, this, there's not that many unique stories. Right? And I think what's going on is that creators are censoring themselves in telling stories that are tried and true over and over and over again. My hunch is that there are many, 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 many more stories that are possible, desirable, yeah. that can be told. And what we need to fix is not creatives. What we need to fix are the really, really terrible risk models that the industry has been um, you know, living by, right? So it's still the world of comps of sort of averaging the box office returns of every single you know, Tom Cruise movies of the past 15 years. That's garbage that needs to go, right? There, there's a better way to do this that leverages the kind of technologies that, that Poppy was talking about that really will allow, will empower creatives and not constrain them. Assistant editors will disappear because editing, like this job that they're doing today, will be automated, right? So there's a lot of transformation into workflows that is going to affect jobs. And I think um, if, as a union, you are job is to um, you know, uh, uh, really structure, like est establish a, a regulatory framework around specific jobs, like you should really look at what aspects of my member base's jobs is gonna be affected by these technologies. I'm not really seeing it very much. Eve said I, something I've been, that- I've, I've been given the wrap up sign, so the last word goes to you. Well, I was just going to say, um, I think if you touched on something that's really important, which you know, when, I, when we're bringing up the fact that you can synthetically create a voice or a, an image, these things have to be protected. That's part of why you have to proactively look at this. But moreover, this is a call to action to the entertainment industry. Look, the, the line between truth and fiction is something that is, pro, you know, is becoming too obscured, not just in entertainment, in reality. In, well, I like to say we experience many realities, but that line between tr truth and fiction is something that we're going to have to, you know, proactively walk and 
um, define and protect. 